but the laser head there is able to then cut long runs, able to do complex geometries, able to do things that would require lots and lots of special tools to do different forms and different features. Uh, it basically means you've got two machines in one. We've come to the Prima Power Factory in Finland and we're in front of what looks like a punch machine, but it is so much more, isn't it, Barry? What is it? Absolutely. So this is a Combi Genius. Um, Combi Genius is based off our servo electric punching technology. Behind the skin, it is, of course, a servo electric punch. Added to it is a laser cutting head. So this is now able to do all of the stuff that we love from a punching machine, all the punching, the forming, the tapping work that we all know is possible. And on top of that, any complex geometries that require something more than punching, there's a laser head on there now. So we can now equip this machine with laser cutting for doing bid radio arcs and other complex geometries. So let's dig into why you would need to add the laser. But without the laser, it's a normal punching machine, right? What can you do with a normal punching machine? So with a normal punching machine, your small holes, your big holes, your notches, your cutouts, your forms, louvre panels, anything like that, tapped forms, dimples, all completely possible. Any of our turret punches are able to do that. This is the Genius machine, so 1,000 hits per minute, 20 station or 16 station turret with multi-tools, with all of the indexable forming technologies that we do, fully servo electric, that's all completely possible on so there. So it's a great foundation of to course. then build. What you've got is a laser head on here. Yes, yeah. So attached to the main frame of the machine is a laser head. So the sheet is still moving around as it does under the, uh, the turret punch, but the laser head there is able to then cut long runs, able to do complex geometries, able to do things that would require lots and lots of special tools to do different forms and different features. Uh, it basically means you've got two machines in one. And the big, the big question here is why would someone need something like this? Let's say they could, you, could, you could still uh, punch out bigger radius if you wanted to, you just have to nibble them out a little bit, it might take mm -hmm. a little bit longer. But why? what's the real reason, the real killer reason why someone would need to add a laser to their punch machine? It's to do with your process variance. So for parts that have got lots of different geometries, subcontractors for example, or people that are doing lots and lots of design features where things change regularly and they want to have a machine solution able to do as much as possible in one, that's exactly what this is for. Also, it means that because you haven't got two separate processes, you're not handling the parts between different machines. The part, the process, the sheet is all staying on the same machine platform. So that's minimizing your handling. It's keeping the accuracy there. It's keeping the part quality there. You've got the best of everything on one platform. Now, I see you have some automation options on mm -hmm. here as well. Yep. Now, what are the, how, how do parts come off the machine? What form do big parts come off? What form do small parts come off? What about the little slugs that come out of the punch? Yeah, of course. So basically, the way that the machine works is for smaller parts, we can have um, discharges out through the, the ejection chutes. We can put sorting units in them. Actually, the parts can be very, very large and still go out through the sorting chutes. In this particular case, the machine stood behind us has got a, a loading and stacking system. This can actually, because we've got the night train behind us, retrieve the material cassettes from the night train, load the sheets as the machine is running, and pick the parts from them and stack them back up again, returning them either out into uh, to the operator or putting them back into the night train system. It's completely modular. We can have all sorts of different um, automation solutions on there, just literally loading and unloading the sheet within the skeleton, discharging some parts, or going the whole extreme and p picking and stacking parts as well. And I noticed watching it just now that you don't go halves with the automation. I remember that I see the, the robot is sat there waiting, and ready and waiting just for the laser to finish the last little cut before it goes and picks up the big part and takes it, uh, takes it over to the, to the stacking station just so it can start on the next component. Um, but what if people... Uh, they don't necessarily need the whole automation system. How can they start investing in these kinds of uh, machines? So this is all, again, just like everything else we do, it's modular. Um, so we can start with a more basic machine and add to it. We can even change things as time goes on. So um, if the customer's factory changes, if they relocate, they want to put the machine in a different place, it can all be reinstalled and put in different orientations with different um, automation systems, basically to give maximum flexibility. And you can see, Rome, from uh, watching the machine moving, uh, everything's working in synchronization with everything else. So the machine is literally not waiting for other parts of the process. Keep the dwell times to an absolute minimum. Uh, and going back to the modularity concept, because of the fact that we can add and change things dynamically as the customer develops, uh, it basically means that they can grow their business alongside us.